And our fourth main topic today gets submitted to us by Val. And Val writes, In the latest news, the FTC, that's the Federal Trade Commission, apparently taking exception at some point of movie passes, them again, business practices, which might have been illegal. According to the FTC, MoviePass, among other questionable practices, char- changed passwords to lock customers out of the service. The use of the tripwires to restrict users and purposefully clunky ticket validation processes, all and other questionable practices, were known by the CEO Mike Lowe and Chairman Ted Farnsworth. Oh boy, Rob. It's time for <laughs> us to talk. We thought they were gone. You thought it was done, but it's time for us to talk about MoviePass again. Dude, this is maddening to hear, though. This 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 stuff is this is serious stuff. Now, let's back up a little bit and give a little bit of context to this, shall we? So, as we back up, Movie Pass for those of you who lived under a rock and maybe aren't familiar, Movie Pass came out a number of years ago with this idea: we will be a membership service where you pay us ten dollars a month, and in exchange, you can go to one movie a day. Unlimited. You go to one movie a day. Just use our our movie pass card as your debit card as you buy the tickets. You register for the movie on the online movie pass app. Go to your movie. And everybody was like, yay! But the problem was a lot of other people in the industry said, this is not sustainable. You can't possibly stay in business charging $10 a month. Because here's the way it worked. Uh, you know what? Let's bring up the Campia classroom again just for a second for the heck of it, okay? Because here's how it worked as we bring up uh, Movie Pass. All right, so here's how it worked. So, what you would do is Movie Pass, you pay, you pay Movie Pass $10 per month. All right, there's that. The problem is, Now you can go to see one movie a day. Let's say you go to see eight movies in a month because you've got this movie pass. You go to see eight movies a month. Here's the problem. Movie pass, uh, mover pass, movie pass paid full ticket price to the theater you went to see the movie. So that means at an average national ticket price, Rob, of of $10 per ticket, that means movie pass got $10 from you, but paid out $80 that month to theaters. That That's not a business model. It, it's not a good business model to say, hey, come on into my shop, give me $5 and I'll give you 50. You can't stay in business like that. And everybody in the industry was looking at, and while the well, well, movie fans were like, oh, this is great. This is fantastic. I got a movie mem- movie pass membership myself, Rob, if you remember. Yep. I, I had it myself. So all the fans are like going, this is great. But everybody in the industry is looking at movie pass and going, w- you can't stay in business. You're going to go under real, real fast. How on earth? What is your business model? Ah, Rob. But that's when the shadiness and when I started to call out Movie Pass on their vile, underhanded shadiness, started to come to fruition, and we started to see how they understood they weren't going to make any money on memberships from their members. They wanted to make money off the movie theaters. Here was their business plan. Um, their business plan was blackmail. That was their business plan. The whole idea behind Movie Pass was this: by charging just ten dollars a month, right? By making it really cheap, and we'll take a loss on it. You know, uh, we'll we'll get millions of subscribers, right? And they did. They got millions and million. I think at one point up to ten million subscribers, if I'm not mistaken. They got millions of subscribers. Well, they're losing money on all their subscribers, so what's the business plan? Their business plan was to use those subscribers as leverage to blackmail movie theaters and movie studios. How? They wanted movie theaters to cut MoviePass in on a 
percentage of their concession stand sales and on a percentage of their ticket sales. So Movie Pass was basically saying, hey, movie theaters, give us some of your money. And the movie theaters like AMC said, no, F you. Why on earth would I give you your money? And that's where the real shadiness of Movie Pass came out. Because Movie Pass started to act like, you know, like they were the mob. Well, you know, AMC Theater, sure would be a shame if all of a sudden our 10 million subscribers couldn't use Movie Pass to go to an AMC Theater. So what happened was uh, Movie Pass started shutting out certain AMC Mac. Uh, AMC theaters and you it was all in the news Rob we talked about it on our shows back in the day it's like all of a sudden as retaliation movie pass said oh yeah AMC and Regal you won't do business with us you won't cut us in on your on your action we're gonna start doing some things here to try to damage you and it's like that's when a lot of people including myself turned on movie pass it's like wait a minute if your whole business model is blackmail that's your business model, then that's pretty shifty. And then, of course, Rob, it started getting worse because Movie Pass with like one studio. I remember, Rob, it was, I, th I talked about this recently on a companion video, but there was one weekend where there was a new Jennifer Lawrence movie coming out. I think it was called Red Sparrow. Um, and I think Joel Edgerton was in that as well. Anyway, so it was Red Sparrow. And. Then there was that Eli Roth remake with Bruce Willis uh, about the vigilante. Well, um, Death with, Wish. Death Wish, thank you. The remake, they did the remake of Death Wish. So the studio behind Death Wish, Rob, paid Movie Pass for some promotion, and they were promoting Death Wish in the app, right? Whenever you open up your Movie Pass app, it's like, hey, don't forget to see Death Wish this week, right? But wouldn't you know it? The other movie that was opening that weekend, Red Sparrow with Jennifer Lawrence, the company that didn't pay Movie Pass for promotion that weekend, you couldn't use your Movie Pass to go see that movie that weekend. I remember I found this out yeah. because I specifically went to my AMC theater with my Movie Pass to go see uh, whatever the name of the movie was, Red Bird or Red twitter or whatever the jennifer lawrence movie was called no it was red sparrow red sparrow it was red sparrow so i went to go see red sparrow and all of a sudden it wouldn't give me an option to use it and then i found out nobody had the option to use it to see red sparrow because they were like oh yeah it's a shame red sparrow you didn't uh, kick in any money when they did so we're not going to let our users go see it's like oh my god this company is completely corrupt they should burn this company needs to burn and then we'd see their ceo coming out and lying through his teeth all the time well Rob, as we now finally catch up to this, it wasn't just the fans and the users seeing how badly they were being screwed over. They finally, lawsuits got lost and the Federal Trade Commission started to investigate them themselves. The Federal Trade Commission started to get involved and saying, and they have started to release, the FTC has started to release some of their findings. And Rob, it's worse than we thought. It's worse than we thought. Now, we're going to read some of this at length because I think it's, it's important to see just how bad this got. All right. So as we go over to the FTC website and their report on this, they say FTC says movie pass one movie per day promise was a double feature of deception. Oh, those headline writers over at the FTC. They're so clever. A double feature of deception. All right. Hang with me here, guys, because we're going to read some of this at length because it really is like crazy. It's absolutely crazy stuff to read, but let's listen to this. As the fast-talking talent scout said in 100 Hollywood classics, I'm going to put you in the movies. MoviePass promised to put consumers in the movies, or at least in the movie theaters, with its $9.95 per month. One movie per day subscription plan. A proposed settlement outlines three concerns the FTC had with the company's practices. Number one illegal tactics that MoviePass employed to block subscribers from using the services advertised. Number two, violations of the Restore Online Shoppers Confidence Act, or ROSCA. And number three, MoviePass's failure to take reasonable steps to secure subscribers' personal information. Let's get into these three roadblocks that they call them, right? Roadblock number one was the company's password disruption policy. Listen to this, what they were doing behind the scenes. According to the complaint, 
MoviePass invalidated the passwords of 75,000 subscribers who used the service most often while falsely claiming that the company had detected suspicious activity or potential fraud. Remember, this is the results of the FTC investigation, okay? Detected suspicious activity or potential fraud on their accounts. To reinstate their accounts, the password disruption program required those subscribers to maneuver through an obstacle course worthy of a blockbuster action flick, a process complicated by the fact that MoviePass's password reset process often failed. So basically it was this. MoviePass is like, give us $10 a month, we'll give you one movie a day. Oh my God, some of you are using it a lot. Okay, you know what we're going to do? Hey, and this has been verified by them that the CEO knew they were doing it. Go on in and uh, change their passwords. Just, just, just go into the to, to the to the users who are using it the most. Change their passwords, just so they can't log in. And when they ask why, put out a BS standard message that says we detected suspicious activity. There was Dude. no suspicious activity. So if Dude. you're one of those people who had who had Movie Pass, if you're one of those people who had Movie Pass. And you got one of those notifications, oh, suspicious uh, suspicious activity. There was no suspicious activity. They never thought there was suspicious activity. All they knew was that you were using your movie pass like four or five times a month, which was costing them money. So they artificially went in, snick, snuck in the back door, and changed your password so you just couldn't log into your account. And so there are people who are like, I bought this service. I didn't set the price at $10 a month. You set the price at $10 a month. I agreed. I paid it. And I'm just trying to use it now. And they come along and screw people over. But let's go back over to this FTC thing here again here. The complaint alleges that the company had received in-house warnings about its password disruption program. One of the movie pass executives brought up a concern and said this. There is a high risk that this will catch the FTC's attention and the state's attorney general's attention and could reinvigorate their questioning of MoviePass, this time from a consumer protection standpoint. So even execs in MoviePass were saying, guys, we can't do this. We are going to get hit by the FTC and we're going to get prosecuted by attorney generals if they find out what we're doing. But they still went ahead and moved on anyway. But then it gets even better. Listen to this. The second roadblock was this. Second, MoviePass launched a ticket ver you remember this one? Everybody got mad about this. MoviePass launched a ticket verification program that required about 20% of subscribers, approximately 450,000 consumers, to submit photos of their ticket stub within a certain time frame. Although the company told consumers they had been randomly selected for the program, the FTC says MoviePass imposed the additional obstacle on subscribers who use the service most frequently. And woe be unto the subscriber who simply stuffed their stub in their pockets because MoviePass responded to their failure to submit a timely ticket by barring them from going to more movies and, in some circumstances, even canceling their subscriptions. So... Not only was MoviePass sneaking in the back door and changing your password so you couldn't use it, they implemented this thing where it's like, okay, now uh, now once you go to the movie and you get your ticket, um, you have to take a picture of your ticket and upload it to us at MoviePass. And if you don't do that, you can get suspended, whatever. I, I myself, Rob, I got suspended. My MoviePass account got suspended once for a couple of weeks because... That's unbelievable, dude. It, it, it was it was outrageous because I forgot to take my movie ticket when I was there for a movie, hold it up to my phone, take the picture, upload it to movie. But because I forgot to do that, I got suspended for a few weeks. And I thought I was suspended permanently. They eventually reactivated my account. But I was using it a lot. So they were now we find out from the FTC that they were actually targeting me. Now let's look at the third thing that they did, according to the FC, FTC. Third, MoviePass imposed what it called a tripwire system that prevented some consumers from continuing to use their subscriptions once they reached a certain undisclosed threshold. Like once somebody sees a certain number of movies a month, cut them off. Even though the promise was one movie a day, unlimited for $10 a month. A certain undisclosed threshold. According to the complaint, the company typically activated the tripwire on people who watched more than three movies per month. 
Just three movies per month. That's less than one a week. Far fewer than the advertised one movie per day limit. The FTC says some subscribers didn't learn they had been barred until they were already at the theater, which I know many people can can uh, testify to, Rob. I know many people who, many people wrote into our show saying, yeah, I went to the movie theater to use my movie pass and it wouldn't work. No notifications, no anything. So, number one, movie pass had a business plan based on the philosophy of blackmail. Number two, they knew their $10 a month plan service plan was absolutely unsustainable they only wanted to use the subscribers as blackmail leverage number three when theaters wouldn't play ball with them and cut them in on their concession stand things and everything they started to shut down service to certain movie theaters now we find out they were going behind users backs and shutting off or or changing their passwords on them they were implementing unreasonable things like taking tickets but they were targeting people that they specifically wanted to get shut down and they even implemented a tripwire system this was the most bogus and rob i remember back in the day when movie pass was like when amc was making statements like listen we don't trust this movie pass company they clearly don't have a good business model we are not going to do business with them and everybody said oh amc's just mad that somebody's doing it better when amc already had their own subscription service in the planning stages already but but now we look back it's like guess what amc was right they were right the whole time they knew that company was shady they knew that company shouldn't be trusted and they knew that company had an unsustainable business model and they called them out on it and everybody got mad at amc for saying it but now we find out they were totally right rob i think it's important that this story gets out there about what the FTC investigation is turning up because you know something else is going to pop up in the future because when it looks too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. And uh, yeah, I I just, it's, it's unfortunate, Rob. It's unfortunate to look and see it was this level of evil. Anyway, Rob, you taking a look at this, which of these things are standing out to you the most? And are you surprised at all by what we're seeing here? Well, first of all, you know, I was given a movie pass prepaid for a year, you know, so I had the the annual movie pass. And even when I got it, when we first started using it, Elizabeth and I were using it. She got it for me. And when I first went to the I first we were first went to the Americana to see a movie there, the Pacific Theaters there. And I I was like, how does this work? Like I said to her, I go, what if what if we went to a movie every day? Uh, for the month or every other day, or we're avid moviegoers, there's no possible way that this model could make money. And I think from the get-go, it was a grift. I, I, I and, and, and seeing this, reading this report, reading these, it, it's so maddening to read something like this because I figured when I first got it, maybe there's just something that I don't know. But this was something that was designed, not only did they take money from a loved one of mine who gave me a present, but then I had it for a very little amount of time before they started playing these shenanigan games with, with all of us. And it was apparent to me that they, they didn't even understand their grift because they were not, I think they were unprepared for how many people used the movie pass, right. the very service that they were promised they even whoever would design this, whatever marketing idiots they had doing this, woefully underestimated how many people were going to use a movie pass to do exactly what they said it was going to do. And I think that was a, a huge problem for them. And um, uh, hearing about this, that rather than just try and, I don't know, fix their problems, they went after their own consumers and, and tried to swindle them. I mean, it, this was a swindle. This was an out and out. It was a crime. The, a crime was committed by every single to, against every single person who bought a movie pass but, and paid their fee. These people should be prosecuted. This was criminal behavior. It was a criminal conspiracy against their own customers. And I hope they all go down. I remember 
it was about two years ago as they were in their death knells, right? As they were on their deathbed and they were sinking fast, their stock went from 30 something dollars down to eight cents. Then they did that 250 to one stock merge. Remember that? So yeah. the stock price of MoviePass had gone from $35 or something down to eight cents. So they said, okay, every 250 shares of stock you have now counts as one share. So it artificially relifted the value of the stock and it went up to like $21 when they did that. Within a few days, it dropped back down again to two cents. And it was terrible. But in the midst of that, they decided MoviePass and their criminal CEO put out this public statement that they lashed out at the theaters and they were based, they put up this public statement. I remember I made a video about this statement that they did about two years ago, where basically movie pass started lashing out saying, you know, we're going to hang in there. We're going to still be here. And they're not obviously, but we're still going to be here. But you know, the movie theaters is just mad at us because they, they are scared that if we're successful, It'll end their monopoly of overpricing their tickets and overpricing their concessions. To which I said, wait a minute there, buckaroo. Weren't you just trying to get a cut of the concessions from the movie theaters? And weren't you just trying to get a cut of the movie ticket prices from the theaters? You weren't complaining at all about the cost of concessions and everything a little while ago when you were trying to blackmail the theaters into giving you a cut of their concession stands. Oh, but now, now you're, you're Robin Hood. You're just here to try to save the little guy. And, and it was, you could just smell the shady on them from a mile away. And you're right, Rob, it's pure criminal. There should be criminal prosecutions. There should be people getting, I'm not saying throw people away for life, but there should be some prison sentences handed out. Even if they're well, I mean, this, You know, it's one thing to be a, a dumbass in business and do something stupid, but this was wanton fraud. I mean, and, 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 and they were, they were, they were actively working against their own consumer base. They were, they were harming their own consumer base. And while, yeah, at the end of the day, people could say, wow, you know, Rob, it's only a movie pass thing, but yeah, it's still money. You know, it's still, uh, uh, uh with an annual pass, I think it was like $120 or something. And, um, it, it, that's a lot of money and, and people are giving this as gifts and there, it was done in all good faith. The consumers were 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 celebrating their love of movies and it was trying to cross pollinate through different businesses. This was a complete grift. I hope these people have the book thrown at them. And you know what I else really it do. did? Here's the other thing it did. This was the one thing I remember when Movie Pass was first coming out and AMC one of their first public statement and it was uh uh it was Gary back when the Gary was still the CEO of AMC. He was a great CEO of AMC. And he put out a public statement that said this, look we are extremely concerned about this movie pass company because there is no way their business model is going to be able to work. And this is going to hurt our industry because a bunch of people are going to get used to this idea of just paying $10 a month. And then they're going to go out of business because they have an unsustainable business model and prices go up and all of a sudden everything will seem super expensive again. Now, of course, AMC later put out AMC a list, which is like the best thing ever to happen to film fans. It's amazing. Uh, Regal now has their own movie subscription service. The entire movie theater industry has been transitioning pre pandemic transitioning over to a monthly subscription service model. Uh, and, and don't forget, Rob, it wasn't movie pass that created this Cineworld had been doing it for a decade over in the UK. They've had a program like this going for, for like 10 years over in the UK. So they didn't even invent it, but the monthly subscription model works, but you just got to do it in a way that's sustainable. And they didn't anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about all these new revelations coming from the federal trade commission's investigation into movie pass? It looks to me like the depths of their evil were even way more than I thought it was. And I already thought they were pretty damn shady. Uh, how do you guys think about this? Could we see something like this ever rear its head again? Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Okay, guys.